Next on UConn Sports Nation, another injury for the UConn men's basketball team as Jalen Adams went down with an injury on Saturday. What's that mean as the Huskies prepare for AAC tournament play? Also, I sat down with UConn football secondary coach Kieran Cox for an extended interview. He talked about his time in the NFL and how that's going to prepare him for UConn. And finally, out in California, former UConn football quarterback Garrett Anderson is getting ready for Pro Day in March. He's got a camp invite in the CFL and is looking for more. All that and more, let's go! The Monday edition of UConn Sports Nation. Matt Chavisky, your host, as usual, available on iTunes, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. A jammed show, as I mentioned off the top. A couple of interviews regarding UConn football. Garrett Anderson, former quarterback. New secondary coach, Kieran Cox, is here. And I want to discuss the UConn men's basketball team and what the future is going to hold for them. Specifically, after Jalen Adams went down with that ankle injury, Late in that first half on Saturday against SMU in the 69-61 loss, the Huskies showed a lot of heart in that second half, even without Jalen Adams available, as the Huskies actually did win the second half. But it never was. It never seemed like it was really close. To me, shut Jalen Adams down until postseason play. There's no need to risk further injury. There's no need to risk further tweaking of that ankle. And based on some injuries I've seen with NBA players, it takes a long time to come back from these severe ankle sprains. So I wouldn't even consider playing him against East Carolina, honestly, on Wednesday. But I did see that Coach Kevin Ollie did say he's going to be a game-time decision. But to me, you need him for the postseason tournament. So why take the risk? Maybe throw him out there against Cincinnati. But against East Carolina, I would say let it go. Let the other guys step in and play. They do need one win for that first-round bye. But... I think Jalen Adams' availability in the AAC tournament is a lot more important than even getting a first-round bye or a win against East Carolina. So I would say shut him down at least through Wednesday, let him get some rest, keep him off the practice court, and just see how he is able to recover heading into the weekend as the Huskies really don't play again until Sunday after Wednesday's game. So I did want to discuss the games that Kent Facey had on Saturday against SMU. 15 points, 9 rebounds, 7 to 12 from the field in 38 minutes. He was a major factor in, in Saturday's game, and I want to see more of that. Chris Vitale obviously picked up the slack once Adams was out. Adams, again, only played 16 minutes. He went out with, I think it was 2.5, 229 to be exact, left in the first half. And Vitale came in, 14 points. Three of six from three, four rebounds, one assist. He played a very good game for, again, he's a freshman. I don't know if you should really call him a freshman with the amount of experience he's had. He's really developed and has had a lot of playing time given all the injuries that the Huskies have had. All their starters, minus Adams, all above 30 minutes, including Vitel. 31 minutes for Vitel. Purvis, 39 minutes. He only rested one minute in that game. Only 2 of 12 from 3. He struggled, and that's a big reason why the Huskies were not able to come through. 29% overall from 3 is not going to get the job done, especially against the top seed in this upcoming tournament. The entire offense changed when Adams went out. No longer was there any penetration. No longer was there getting to the basket from the outside. The Huskies would dub it down on the block to Kenton Facey at times, but Amita Brima not anywhere to be found. 0 for 3 on the day. And the Huskies are going to need a lot more from Brima. They're going to need a lot more from Vance Jackson. And they're going to need Purvis to improve from his 2 of 12 performance if they're going to really get to where they need to get to in order to save, prep themselves for the AAC tournament next weekend. So I did want to touch on that big SMU game, share my thoughts on how the Huskies should approach Jalen Adams. But the vast majority of this show is going to be about UConn football. And I'll... Begin with secondary coach Kieran Cox after the UConn Sports Minute. This UConn Sports Minute is sponsored by ThisIsUConnCountry.com. The men's basketball team dropped Saturday's matchup with AAC leader SMU 69-61. 
and they will likely have to get a win in one of their two remaining regular season games to clinch the critical first round bye in the postseason conference tournament. The Huskies are back on the court in Greenville, North Carolina on Wednesday night at 7 to face East Carolina, who they narrowly beat 72-65 to in late January in Hartford. The women's basketball team wraps up the regular season tonight in Tampa against USF ahead of this weekend's AAC tournament at Mohegan Sun. The undefeated Huskies tip off at 7, and you can see the game on ESPN2. UConn baseball dropped 2 of 3 in Austin to the Texas Longhorns, but did grab a 2-1 win on Saturday. In the win, junior right-hander Wills Montgomery struck out 13 in just 6 and a third innings, while allowing only 4 hits, earning him AAC Pitcher of the Week honors. The Huskies are 4-3 and three overall and play 3 games in Florida this weekend, beginning with Western Michigan, prior to heading to the West Coast next weekend. The men's hockey team wrapped up the regular season with a weekend sweep of UNH 5-3 and 4-2, earning them the ninth seed in the Hockey East playoffs, which begin on Friday. The Huskies will be on the road in Boston in the best of three playoff series with all games beginning at 7 p.m. from Matthews Arena. UConn, of course, is looking for their first playoff series win in this now their third season in Hockey East. Matthews Arena was also the site where the women's hockey team saw their season end this past weekend as they were swept 2-0 by Northeastern in the first round of the Hockey East playoffs. Despite a lopsided 6-2 loss in Game 1, the women did not go down without a fight, forcing overtime in Game 2 before eventually falling 3-2 ending their year at 14, 18, and 4. And that's the UConn Sports Minute. I'll be back with UConn football secondary coach Kieran Cox after this. You're listening to UConn Sports Nation, presented by thisisyukoncountry.com, where you'll find the latest news, game previews, and recruiting when it comes to UConn football. Welcome to UConn. First round. Appreciate it. So um, you had some time in the NFL, right? Yeah, I did. Um, what, have, what have your experiences college level, NFL level, now coaching staff, what's been, what's helped you get to where you are, I guess? Just continue to, just continue to learn and uh, always trying to be better uh, and stay in, and stay motivated, you know, just know that, you, to me, I always tell my guys, you, you're either growing or you're dead, you know, you're dying because a lot of times people feel like you're at the top, the peak, but you always got to continue to improve every day. And that's kind of the approach we're taking here with every day we just want our guys to get better. We don't know where the top is right now, but we just know every day we're trying to get better. Um, you know, the biggest difference obviously is, you know, with the generational change, you know, a lot of times they don't know the business side of the NFL because um, all they go up is what they see on TV, and it's a lot different. Um, and the, the reason I love the college game is because it's about developing, and you get to develop these guys. You know, a lot of my educational background, my master's and stuff, it's all in education because I wanted a mentor. And that's what we do, and that's one of the things that was most exciting about working with Coach Hetzel. I was fortunate to be with him at Maryland, and I see how we develop those guys. I see how we're going to develop players. And at the end of the day, you know, you know, I have kids of my own, and it's not always about at the same time, you know, um, they're not going to always understand it right away, but at the end of the day, as long as we're doing what's best for them and trying to better them and hold them to the standard that we know they're accountable with, you can walk away, and then they walk away later and be so uh, thankful, and they, they really get a good product. So that's, that's the biggest difference. It's about developing here. Uh, and my beliefs, you know, my philosophy, it's all about fundamentals and techniques, you know. Uh, and, you know, at the next level, a lot of times it's people just rely, you know, you just don't get that mentorship, you know, because you don't have to. You don't have to. You look on a wire and you pick who you want. Here, you're de you, you got to recruit these kids. Yeah. So, you know, you build relationships with them. Uh, when you first got the call, you were at Coastal Carolina, right? Yes, sir. Um, what was the reaction when, when Coach Essel huh. reached out? It was actually pretty funny uh, because this wasn't the first time he reached out. He had reached out before when they had an opening at Maryland. Um, you know, interviews didn't work out at the time. Um, you know, he wanted to go a different direction. And, um, you know, so when it happened, you know, I told him, I said, you know, um, you know, regardless of whatever happens where you want to go with this I would just like the opportunity to show you you know my growth because again it's about at the time it may not have been what I wanted to hear um, but he told me what I needed to improve upon and I took that and that's what it's all about as long as you take coaching advice you know you can continue to grow and it was just night and day and that's one of the things he told me was like it's night and day for who you are I, I knew you and he said I knew that you had that in you it's just you know maybe right at that time it wasn't the right timing and I believe in that everything everything has, has its, its own time um, definitely a, a big reputation for defensive backs here. Mm -hmm. um, are you aware of the history here, catching up on, on the success that really has been here? If I didn't, you know, if I didn't, every time I walk in the office, I see it on the wall. Yeah. It's like the wall of fame. I mean, 
gosh, it's unbelievable. Uh, Coach Smith and I, we played together at Maryland before he transferred here. And so we were talking about the history that Maryland had defensive backs. And then we, I had no idea until I got here. And I've always known because I know a lot of players. You know, it's, you know how this goes. You know people. And I've always heard people talking about all the great success UConn had. But I was actually shocked. And I didn't know it was, I mean, from the defensive backfield, it is amazing. Amazing what they have. I mean, you know, I wish we would have got one more year so I could have got OB. You know, it's easy to coach the greats. Yeah. But, you know, and that's, that's the thing I look. I want to now help continue that tradition. I want to help teach those guys what it takes, you know, having the opportunity to play at all levels um, and sit in a lot of their shoes. You know, I can tell them what it's going to take. Um, and as long as they commit and trust me, we'll get them there and we'll continue the pipeline going because I'm not a finished product yet. And that's a great thing, you know, uh, working with Coach Crocker. He's a guy who's had defensive backfield uh, experience. Coach Tessu has defensive back experience. So combined, we'll get those guys and hopefully be able to continue to put those guys in. Playing in a 3 3 5, um, a lot more responsibility, I guess, on the defensive backs. Is, is, that, is that an accurate assessment? And are you really asked as in your position to coach differently as opposed to a regular 4 3 3 4? No, only because the game's evolving. Um, the difference is this. It's not really on the back end. It's really on the front end. It's the difference in the backer and the D-lineman. Because really, if you think of what this game's come to, there's no difference in a 4-2-5 from the secondary perspective than a 3-3-5. Because 4-2-5, you still have how many backs in the field? Five. Um, and with this game, you know, last year, you know, at Coastal, we played primarily with nickel and dime. So it's your coach in the corners, your coach in the dimes, your coach in the nickels. I mean, uh, safe, safeties. Um, so not really on my perspective. Uh, it's more people, in the, you know, more people in the, on the field. That's great. Gives us more opportunity. Um, it, you know, depth is important. But it, as far as the scheme, no, um, it's really not. Now, what you, what it does do for us is you got to be versatile. You have to not. You can't just be pigeonholed. And I'm this corner. I'm this safety because at any dip, given time, you know, one guy could be back, one guy could be down. So that's what it is. But you know, myself, the reason I was afforded a, a successful NFL career was because. I was able to play multiple positions. So that's how I teach. I believe, you know, you got to teach the kids about concepts. Uh, this day and age, a lot of guys try to memorize positions and they struggle. Mm -hmm. But if you understand the concepts, we'll have success in our defense. And that's why I was excited about this class. It gives you versatility. Um, and we even have some guys now, you know, you're getting a, getting a chance to see the guys move around a little bit. And you're getting intrigued and you're, you know, you're like, okay, where can I use him at? And we'll, we'll find out. But that's the good thing about it. Versatility is best when you're having a 3-3-5. Three, three, that's the one thing I will say, versatility. Because it's not necessarily the 3-3-5. Three, three, it's Coach Crocker's system, which changes the defensive perspective. What's the transition for you been like coming up here to Connecticut? Something new, UConn. What's your impression been? How are you settling in? Man, you know, the best transition has been the fans and been the staff. Like, that's unbelievable, man. You know, I, I've always told people it reminds me of when I played in Denver. Denver... Uh, there wasn't really too many surrounding states from Colorado that had professional teams. So it was nothing but love, support, uh, and enthusiasm. It wasn't bandwagonish. They were with you with you know whatever reasons. And this the, the, the reception for Coach Etzel coming back is phenomenal. Um, you know, it's funny, you know, social media, you just go up all of a sudden from like, you know, three thousand to five thousand followers. You know, it's just every day it's somebody and it's exciting. Um, so that's great. And then our staff, man, you know, we hit the ground running right away. And, 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 the, and the thing about this industry is a lot of us coached against each other. We knew each other. Uh, there was camaraderie. So everybody's adjusting at the same time. Uh, you know, so that's been really, really great. And it's been comfortable uh, working for Coach Etzel. You know, so that's, that's helped with the transition. But again, the fans. And now what's helping is the players. Because ultimately, we won't be anything without them. And they make us feel they're excited to have us. You know, because that transition is never easy. Um, you know, they're teenagers at the end of the day. They're, so they could be frightened. But they've really uh, opened us with welcome arms. And they're, they're excited, I think. So you guys will be getting on the field finally in a short while here. What, you, what's, what are you, hoping, you going to be hoping to accomplish in the spring? Probably a lot of evaluation, see which guys fit where. Exactly. That's all we're coming from. You know, just know what we have. Uh, let them know what, we, what, we're, what our standard is. Uh, Get everybody playing with great energy, uh, great enthusiasm, uh, technique side. We you know all things can be, you know, do your job. And at the end of the spring, then we know moving forward now, here's where we go. And now it's going to find the best fit for those guys because it's not like a long season. It's gonna, you're going to get 14 practices to find what the skill sets are because that's where coaching comes in. Now you got to put guys in, in positions to be successful. So I think that's the biggest thing we're going to come from, getting those guys to, you know, understand, push harder. Okay, work harder, and at the end of the day, you know, just want to be great and have that will to win. So I think that's going to be, you know, schematics, that'll come. 
but I think these, they're great for the kids. And I think um, you know, leaving spring ball, if we just know what we have and we just get them playing hard, the rest will take care of so. That's Kieran Cox. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're listening to UConn Sports Nation, presented by ThisIsUConnCountry.com, where you'll find the latest news, game previews, and recruiting when it comes to UConn football. On the UConn Sports Nation hotline is former UConn quarterback Garrett Anderson out on the West Coast enjoying that California life. Garrett, what's up? Not much. Like you said, enjoying the uh, California weather and the California life. So what's uh, post-UConn life been like for you? Uh, so far, just a lot of training, getting ready for pro day. Um, I've done one CFL tryout this far. I'm about to do another one um, coming up this next weekend. Not this weekend, but the following one. And then um, continue training and be back out in Connecticut pretty soon. So following the year, you took part in a postseason All-Star game. Actually threw a touchdown uh, during that game. What was that experience like, and, and what did you get a chance to learn during that time? Um, that was a really exciting time. It was fun to be out there and um, get to play some football and get around some guys that, I mean, there are some really good players there, guys who want to do the same thing, have the same goals in mind. Um, so that was that's always good to be around those guys. Um, I would say I learned, um, let's see, that's a good question. I, I think I learned a lot from being around just the guys and being around some um, some of the coaches who have been in the NFL, even guys who were special teams um, coordinators and um, didn't, it may not have been offensive coordinators in the NFL or guys who coach quarterbacks, but it was still interesting to see guys who have been around that level of talent and be able to play for those guys for a weekend and a couple of days. So I guess that was that was a learning experience and it was fun to compete against some of the best guys. Now you mentioned uh, a little bit ago about the CFL. I, I think I saw you did get a camp invite. Is that accurate? And, and what are your plans um, from this point moving on? Um, yeah, so after the um, Saskatchewan tryout, they gave me a uh, – and invite to their mini camp at the end of April. Um, as of right now, I'm really, my plan is, I'm open to anything. So really, I'm just trying to put myself in the best position possible um, in order to continue playing and continue to do what I love. So really, it's if it's CFL route first, I'm totally open to that. And I'm just excited for what the future holds and hopefully I can get more opportunities like that so I can have a choice of what I want to do um, in regards to CFL camps, um, NFL mini camps and just see see kind of where the process takes it. So you mentioned Pro Day as well, which is, I believe, March 22nd in stores. Going to be a very big opportunity as I, I believe there's a number of NFL scouts going to be in attendance. Uh, what's training been like for you and exactly what's your regimen as you you lead up to March back at UConn? Um, it's a lot of, so a lot of my stuff is the way I'm training is um, it's a facility called the Rage, and it's a quarterback facility, so it's quarterback specific. So all my training has been um, for a throw, um, throw every day, um, whether that's group sessions with a couple other guys who are doing the same thing, who are either free agents or um, training for pro day. And then as well, I do the um, pro day testing, um, which has all been individualized for me and um, so I get individual coaching, and it really it really works out well um, in regards to getting the most improvement and um, finding results and getting the best results out of it. Garrett Anderson's on the UConn Sports Nation hotline. Now, there's a, a number of other UConn former UConn seniors um, that are in the same process as you. Have you had a chance to talk to them throughout this entire process? I'm sure you got a group chat going on. Yeah, I've been talking to a few of them. Um, Specifically, just Noel and uh, Brian, since we're going to be spending a lot of time together, especially when we get back, trying to kind of get a script together, get things um, right in regards to timing, and um, them obviously being the receivers and trying to get the routes down. And we have to be on the same page in regards to what routes they want to run, what they think the scouts will see from them, and then um, mixing it in with what I need to show and um, the abilities that people need to see from me. So you're going to be throwing to both Noel and uh, Brian at Proda? Yes. 
Okay. Yes. Now, looking back on your UConn experience, what are you going to take away from your time there? It was a quick two years. Obviously, you made perhaps the biggest play in recent UConn memory with that throw to Noel against Houston. Uh, what's the, what was the experience like, and what does UConn mean to you now that you've you've moved on? Um, I would agree with you. It's definitely a fast, very fast two years. It's amazing how how it flies by. But um, I enjoyed my time. Um, mostly, I enjoyed every one of my teammates. Um, I just I've never been around a, a better group of guys, and uh, the way they, those guys fight every day. And I know I came in um, obviously after a lot of the adversity and all the stuff that they went through. Um, their two first two years and three years for guys who redshirted, but all the stuff, all the losing and the just the, the hard times they went through, um, that obviously showed me a lot about these people and how um, my teammates handled that. And um, I really learned a lot from those guys, and I really appreciate my time, even though it was short. And obviously, the amount I played wasn't ideal, and and all that. But I mean, every every experience is a learning experience, and I strongly believe that. And Believe that I'm gonna. I can either make it a positive thing, or um, you can. I mean, you can kind of mope around about it, but you gotta create a positive in every way you can. And then final question for Gary Anderson: When you were first arriving at UConn, uh, we were gonna hook up for a story on the charity you were involved in with. Uh, I believe it was your church. Um, have you had a chance to hook back up with them? And if not, do you want to go into details uh, of? what that charity work was all about and what that meant to you? Oh, yeah. So that was basically just a um, – so ever since, I want to say, when I in high school, I was a um, children's teacher, so I would teach Sunday school and um, had the opportunity to do that. Um, and, yeah, that was, a, that was a really fun experience. I haven't um, – obviously, I'm not going to be around much longer, so I haven't linked back up with them and been doing that. But, yeah, that was something I did for multiple years, and um, it was an awesome experience. Um, I think you learn just as much from the kids as um, they do from you or more. And so it's, it's, it's a fun experience, and I definitely miss that and, and enjoyed it while I could do that. It was definitely a blessing. All right, Gary, definitely appreciate your time, and uh, good luck as you prepare for this coming March. And I'll see you again when you're up there for a pro day at UConn. Sounds great. Thank you very much. That is all the time we have in today's show. I'll be back again next week following the conclusion of the regular season for the men's basketball team, previewing the AAC tournament in Hartford, as well as looking back and seeing how the women fared in the AAC tournament down in Mohegan Sun. So until then, go Huskies. You're listening to UConn Sports Nation, presented by thisisyukoncountry.com where you'll find the latest news, game previews, and recruiting when it comes to UConn football.